So a while back, there was this guy named uh, Theodore Kaczynski, and he wrote this really epic book called Industrial Society and Its Future. It's in the video description. Now, um, we refer to him, uh, of course, as Uncle Ted on this channel, but uh, he made in this book a very important distinction between two different types of technology. And these two, knowing the difference between these two different types of technology means the difference between you using technology to, you know, do things more effectively versus you becoming overly reliant on it and to your own detriment in the long term, okay? And that's something, you know, all of us, not all technology is good. Te te technology is not like uh, just a scale of goodness that just gets higher and higher and the higher tech things something is. Um, that means it's better. That's not how it is. Now, uh, the two dif different types of technology, according to Uncle Ted, one of them he calls small-scale technology. Okay, so small-scale technology, this chair, for example, small-scale technology, okay? Chairs don't grow on trees, but you can go into the forest and you can very easily source the materials to make a, a nice little chair like this, okay? It might be a little harder sourcing the paint, but that's doable, you know, not too different, not too difficult. Chairs are small-scale technologies. That railing is a small-scale technology. Those candles, which you can't, yeah, small-scale technology. You can make candles yourself. In fact, even most of my house is small-scale technology. Um, nearly every, there are, of course, some parts that aren't, but most of it, you know, most of the basic structure of a house, you can make yourself takes a lot of effort, but you can do yourself. And importantly, all of this technology you can repair and replace. It's one very important thing. Now, small-scale technology, he contrasts, Uncle Ted, he contrasts with organization-dependent technology. Now, what is that? Organization-dependent technology, it's almost self-explanatory, um, is technology that in order for it to work, in order to, for you know you to make some of it or someone else to make some of it, and in order for it to actually function, you have to be reliant on a massive industrial mass consumerist society for it to work. Okay, the example that he gives is refrigeration. Now, refrigeration is super convenient. It's fantastic technology. I mean, you can throw stuff in your refrigerator or your freezer and it will somehow turn electrical energy into coldness. That's fantastic. Okay, so you can keep all your foods nice, nice and late. Um, so refrigeration is organization dependent technology because you can't go into the forest and make a refrigerator. What you have to do is you have to go to some massive corporation that has mining operations, getting copper. They have all this heavy machinery that can, you know, basically mold the refrigerator in the way needed. It has plastics and all this kind of stuff that you need a massive, uh, you know, factory to make. Basically, you have to go to one of them, buy one. And when you bring it home, it doesn't just work. You have to plug it up to electricity. So you have to rely on the power system that society has, the massive power system that society has organized. And even if you think you're going to get away from that, oh, I'm going to have solar panels. Well, solar panels are the same thing. Solar panels, these massive uh, solar cells made in China shipped over the, sh the sea. I mean, it's not, again, it's not the kind of thing you can go into the forest and make. And if it breaks you are just as reliant on, you know, the system as you would be if you were reliant on public power or something like that, okay? So that's organization-dependent technology. Now, of course, organization-dependent technology is super useful. Refrigeration is great. It's fantastic to be able to chill your fo foods, freeze your stuff. Um, and there are small-scale equivalents of refrigeration, of course. You know, in the olden days before electricity, you would, uh, you'd cure your meat, you'd smoke it or something like that to preserve it, or you'd uh, salt it, or you'd, uh, you know, can vegetables and stuff like that for long-term preservation. And of course, you can still do that now as an individual person. Um, but it's something that a lot of people aren't familiar with because we've become so uh, reliant on organization-dependent technology. So organization-dependent technology is fragile. It's not just fragile, but it's beyond your control. And the more you use it, the more reliant you are going to be on not just other, I mean, there's nothing wrong with being reliant on other people, your neighbors or something like that, the farmer down the road, there's nothing wrong with that. You, you're you not going to make everything yourself. But when you're reliant on a massive industrial system to do basic things like make sure your, your foods don't spoil or, um, you know, to have, you know, let's say you do all your communications using the internet or something like that. You don't, there's no one you can walk to see or something like that. Uh, that makes you extremely reliant on uh, a, a somewhat unnatural way of living. And as soon as there's any kind of trouble in civilization, 
you know, the what they call, you know, shit hits the fan scenarios, uh, all of that stuff breaks down. And you realize that, oh, like I'm naked and alone and I don't even have the small scale technology or know-how to survive. Now, I'm not actually saying the world is going to collapse, um, but one of the things that Uncle Ted, uh, you know, emphasizes is that there are negative psychological ramifications of have, relying on organization-dependent technology as well. Because you just don't have control over what is going on in your life. Um, and more and more nowadays, uh, you know, he, let me give you an example that might ring true to a lot of people on my channel, okay? So, you know, I talk about technology often, computers on my channel, and computers are, of course, organization-dependent technology. You might think you own this computer, but uh, you might think you can even fix it, but you need fancy Chinese parts to be able to actually, you know, you can't, you don't have the ability to make a new p CPU or something like that. Um, and, of course, it's also relying on electricity, like refrigeration. Um, but within the realm of computing, there is a difference between small-scale technology and uh, organization-dependent technology. Let me give you an example. I, uh, w on my channel, I basically always talk about, within the realm of digital technology, I talk about small-scale small technology. That is, I talk about, you know, doing things yourself, using free software that's modifiable, that you can look at. And also, you know, for example, if I want to listen to music or listen to m or watch a movie, uh, I have always just downloaded everything, okay? Downloaded the music, downloaded the movies. I like to have that as, you know, I like to be able to own my copy, well, own legally, I mean, whatever, but I like to have actual copies of the things I want to listen to, the media I want to consume. Now, nowadays, if you look at how uh, technology, even in just within the digital realm, how it is advancing, it is making you more and more reliant on organization-dependent technology. Now, if you want to consume, now if you're a good boy that doesn't uh, that follows all the rules, um, if you're a good boy, you're not supposed to download music. You're not supposed to download movies. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to register with an internet company like Spotify or Netflix to be able to passively consume all the stuff. And of course, the organizational dependent technology is enormous. It's not just, you don't just need a computer and an electrical stream, electrical, you know, you know what I mean. You don't just need a computer and electricity. You need an internet connection that is connected real time to a Netflix account that you have paid for. And Netflix will provide you, you know, provided, you know, their servers aren't overloaded. They'll provide you with this movie. So, Organization-dependent technology, even within the realm of, you know, computing, you know, it's always, I consider it always a bad thing to be more reliant on massive, you know, structure, you know, massive technological structures to provide you with increasingly basic things. Nowadays, you can go to the store, you can go to the store and you can buy a laptop that has no physical storage or just enough for an operating system where you're intended not to actually save your documents to the computer, but use them in the cloud. Now, in order to write a letter to your friend, you have to, you know, you have to log into the internet, log into Google services and write it on their computer. Oh, we'll keep it for you. Don't worry about it. Um, but th that's sort of the same thing. So whenever I'm making a decision, so here, here's where it comes down to. A lot of people think that, oh, oh Luke, you, you, uh, you drop Uncle Ted memes, but you still use the computer. That makes you a hypocrite or something like that. Okay, that's not, that's not, even Uncle Ted, let's just say he manufactured some technology himself, um, but there's, there's nothing like moralistic against the use of even high technology, okay? The issue is understanding the, the social and personal consequences of using your technology and where they go. And I'll put it this way, if you want to take something away from this video, take this away. When you are deciding whether or not to use a technology, the question you should be asking yourself is, is this technology more small scale? Or is it more organization dependent? Because if it's more organization dependent, I can tell you what, it's gonna make you more reliant on things outside of your control. It's gonna make you reliant on your internet connection, some company in China, it's gonna make you reliant on just anything to do something basic. Whereas if you have the choice of having small scale technology, you should always go for that. One, you know, one minor example, I used to, for the longest time when I was a kid, uh, or when I was like a young college student or whatever, like, I guess I still am sort of that age. I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, I had an electric can opener. It's just because that's what I had. And it was so annoying having to plug it up all the time. It was relying on electricity. I couldn't take it camping. And then 
my life was changed when I realized you could get a can opener that wasn't electric. One that you just sort of, you know, screw and, uh, you know, it, it uh, opens a can. That's an example, you know, I could take it out camping, I could do whatever with it. And that's just one example of the kind of things. Usually, most of the things you rely on organization-dependent technology for, there's a small-scale equivalent that you can easily start using. B running around me. Um, so that's my recommendation for you. If there's anything... Uh, oh, and one, one final thing. I noted solar panels. This is another example. You know, people um, said to me, hey, Luke, you should get solar panels. I'm not against solar panels, but as I said earlier, solar panels are still organization technology. Instead of being, being reliant on, you know, public power around here, I'm going to be relying on whatever Chinese company manufactured the solar panels. And if something breaks, I'm going to have to go to them. A, a more robust solution is using alternatives to electricity. So, you know, as I said, using, you know, canning your stuff to store it instead of just keeping it in the refrigerator or something like that. Or, um, you know, if I need to do minor woodwork, nothing too severe, I'm not going to use, you know, my, my electric saw. I'm going to use my hand saw. It's much, much more robust, much more lindy, much more, uh, you know, small scale technology. Anyway, that's my, that's about enough for this video. Hopefully you get the point, but I will see you uh, boomers next time.